Oklahoma is the land of second, third, and last chances. Who were the people that made it so? The Red River Institute of History, johnjdwyer.com, me, Gwen Falconer Lippert, and our signature sponsor, Atwood's Stores, present Oklahoma Gold. Together with our Will Rogers medallion-winning author-historian, John J. Dwyer, we'll stitch the golden threads of Oklahoma history. It's Oklahoma Gold. Dignifying our history through the names we learn? John J. Dwyer, who's this? Well, Gwen, I'm sure that many of our listeners have learned through David Grand's landmark best-selling book, Killers of the Flower Moon, of the hideous mass murder of scores, perhaps hundreds of Osage tribal members in northern Oklahoma for the 1920s oil boom petroleum interests in their land. During this program, we're going to explore the life of of one of Oklahoma's greatest heroes, and how that life crashed headlong into the aforementioned Osage Reign of Terror, with dramatic, even historic, consequences. The Osage Reign of Terror may not be common knowledge. What was it? Well, this was a series of murders through various means of uh, Osage tribal members who had what was called head rights, had the interest uh, to the mineral interests of the great oil and gas deposits that were discovered in their domain, the Osage County, the Osage Nation domain, in the early 20th century. And as I remember, the Osage Indians had so much money that when a car broke down, they just bought another car. Leave it by the side of the road. And so the reign of terror was these evil people trying to get at their money. Preying upon those, you could say in some cases innocent, others who just didn't know any better how to to defend their interests. But as the book Killers of the Flower Moon has really brought it into the public awareness. For years, through the 1920s, A different man, legendary Texas Ranger, now Special Federal Bureau of Investigation agent Tom White, and his hand-picked team lived in or near Pawhuska, capital of the Osage Nation. And they built their case against what evolved into an apparently expansive network of greedy killers and their fellow travelers. Early on, White asked the governor of Oklahoma himself for permission to enlist to his elite team the most renowned Sooner lawman of that generation. State Crime Bureau, later the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, Agent Luther Bishop. Few Oklahoma law enforcement officers have ever attained the magnitude of respect from fellow lawmen and fear from outlaws that naval veteran Bishop did. He fully measures up to the near-mythical status of Old West Oklahoma giants, Heck Thomas, Bill Tillman, and Bass Reeves. Possessed of unshakable integrity and valor, Luther Bishop personally apprehended some of the most dangerous criminals in Oklahoma history, taking several of them down with his two 44 caliber pistols in face-to-face shootouts. He once saved the life of Oklahoma County Attorney and future OKC Mayor O.A. Cargill. When a cornered outlaw whom Cargill and Bishop were pursuing got the drop on Cargill and pointed his gun at him, Bishop drew his own pistol and killed the man before he could fire on Cargill. Bishop was so feared and hated by the criminal world whose ranks he ravaged through two full decades of service that plots abounded among them, both inside and outside prison walls, and including some of the nation's most notorious killers and gangs to assassinate him, as well as to sully his reputation before the public and even within his own family. When he died, Bishop's own colleagues along the thin blue line urged his family not to erect a headstone of any sort at his grave. So certain were they that his enemies would vandalize or even steal it, even after his life ended. Evil hated this man. In combating the monsters perpetrating the Osage reign of terror, Bishop gathered evidence, often in dangerous environs, 
interrogated persons of interest, some of them cold-blooded killers, guarded and transported criminal suspects, protected them from potential assassins, and provided frequent insights and wisdom drawn from his battle-hardened experience with the criminal realm of Oklahoma. For years, Osage bodies, including children, continued to pile up, with no one convicted of wrongdoing. Juries were tainted. Other witnesses lied. Guilty verdicts were overturned. Key witnesses, including both natives and whites, changed their stories at the last minute, or disappeared, or in some dramatic instances involving white victims striving to help the Osages, wound up dead. And diabolical white ringleader William K. Hale, the self-proclaimed king of the Osage Hills, would escape punishment again and again. Finally, in 1929, White and his men achieved a conviction against Hale that stuck, and he went to Leavenworth Prison for 20 years. Other conspirators had already gone to prison, and more would. Oklahoma prosecutor and U.S. attorney for the Western District of Oklahoma, Roy St. Louis, declared Sooner Lawman Bishop indispensable in compiling the evidence to convict these vicious criminals, whose violence included poisoning to death pregnant women and blowing up homes with both natives and whites living inside. Luther Bishop was taken into the inner confidence of the government declared U.S. Attorney St. Louis, as much or more than any of the other evidence gatherers. He worked hand-in-hand with Tom White and Frank Smith and other government men in obtaining the Osage evidence. Gwen, few Oklahomans have ever even heard the name Luther Bishop. Fewer still know the courageous role he played in bringing the perpetrators of the Osage reign of terror to justice. Special Agent Tom White, who we've mentioned several times, helmed the, pro- the successful prosecution of many of the murder conspirators. He praised Bishop's crucial contributions to that effort beyond those of any other Oklahoma lawman and nearly all others. White helped immortalize Bishop with these words penned to his own boss, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, and I quote now, There is one state officer in Oklahoma who gave me as valuable services as any of the agents in the case, White declared to Hoover. That is Luther Bishop, who is connected with the State Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Bishop has been a state officer here for a number of years and has been successful in putting in the penitentiary more bank robbers and other outlaws than any other man in this state. I can't say as much for some other state officers that I had dealings with, but I can command this man's services very highly. His services were obtained through my request made personally upon Governor M. E. Trapp of this state. And that's the end of Special Agent Tom White's quote about Luther Bishop's service in bringing to justice the perpetrators of the Osage Reign of Terror. And as we'll learn after the break, though, Gwen, the fight for true good against real evil is frequently a costly one, sometimes a very costly one. Such was the case with gallant Oklahoma lawman Luther Bishop and his fight against the Osage Reign of Terror. The Golden Nugget when we return. Now that's Oklahoma Gold. Dignifying our history through the names we learn. A Sooner Lawman with unshakable valor and integrity? Tell me more, John J. Dwyer. Well, Gwen, unshakable valor and integrity, those are are high-sounding words, and perhaps they're somewhat possible to practice in normal circumstances, but we talked about before the break uh, the life of legendary Oklahoma lawman Luther Bishop. We were talking about his key role in particular after a a career full of bringing to justice some of the greatest or actually worst criminals in Oklahoma history, doing the same with the perpetrators of mass murder of the Osages, 
murdering the Osages during the 1920s in what's called the, the Osage Reign of Terror in order to seize their head rights to oil and gas wealth found in the Osage domain in the tribe's Oklahoma County, which is our largest. Well, one other related death, I'm sorry to say, may have been the tragic, unsolved 1926 murder of Luther Bishop himself in his own house, the man who played the most crucial role among Oklahoma lawmen in bringing William Hale and other ringleaders of the Osage Terrors to justice. That event tragically occurred at age 41 in December 1926 in a murder that ominously demonstrated the still fragile nature of societal order in this state, just not that many years after the frontier generations. Luther Bishop was shot seven times at close range while sleeping in his own upstairs bed with several family members in his home at 1515 Northwest 28th Street, by the way, in Oklahoma City, a house that still stands. Four of the shots pierced his lungs. Even with the complete disadvantage in which he found himself in his totally dark room in a deep sleep, physical evidence, including broken furniture, the loud commotion in the darkness, and Bishop's own cut and bruised hands and fists and broken thumb indicate that he put up a whale of a fight. Suspects in the crime range from the infamous Oklahoma gangster Matt Kimes and his gang to unknown criminals, to corrupt lawmen, to Bishop's own wife, Edith. In addition, important evidence with the house was tampered with following the attack. Bishop's own 44 caliber pistols, which we mentioned earlier, which quite possibly were used by his assailants to fire at least some of the many bullets that struck him, were found hidden by someone in a closet mere feet from his murder. It occurred during an already extraordinarily tense time for Bishop, for the faithful husband in his marriage. In addition, someone had recently shot a bullet through the side of his car as he drove it. He warned his family when he left for his final assignment, from which he returned only hours before his death, that he might never return alive. He had never before shared such a gloomy statement with his loved ones, including his adoring 15-year-old son, Leo. Indeed, as mentioned, wife Edith was suspected by many, including some of Bishop's close associates, of murdering her husband. She was found innocent in a sensational trial. Retired Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation Special Agent D. Cordry considers that the correct verdict. Cordry believes that Bishop's central role in bringing William K. Hale himself and other ringleaders in the Osage Reign of Terror to justice prompted the legendary lawman's murder. An acclaimed speaker and research consultant whose published books encompass Oklahoma lawmen in history, including Luther Bishop, as well as Cheyenne and other tribal history, Cordry's reasons include the unusually excessive violence involved in both Bishop's murder and some of Hale's killings, as well as the victim's important connection, not just with the Osage murder investigations overall, but Hale's role in them specifically. And again, I'm talking about uh, retired OSBI special agent D. Cordry's reasons to believe that Luther Bishop was murdered by perpetrators of the Osage Reign of Terror because he caused them so much grief and difficulty in his investigations of them. The crime, though, was never solved. Indeed, beyond the legacy that Luther Bishop left as a martyred patriot and lawman was that son we mentioned. A few weeks before Luther's death, he visited with Leo regarding his plans after high school, which was still a couple of years away. When Leo, an active participant in his church since eight years of age, hesitated to comment, his brave father gently remarked that he'd heard the boy was considering becoming a preacher. Well, when he replied that he was, Luther said, Well, son, I have but one thing to say. If you're going to be a preacher, prepare yourself for it and be the best there is. And indeed, that's exactly what his father was. Dr. Leo Bishop went on to be a longtime successful and well-loved Methodist clergyman in Oklahoma City. And Luther Bishop, his father, may have been one of the least recognized but most valiant of all the victims of the Osage Reign of Terror. Now that's 
Oklahoma Gold.